Without further ado, it is my honor to introduce you to Lance Lessinger. Always, he's proud to be part of this event and share with us the value and vision of the college. Lance Lessinger became 12th president of Babson College in 2008, bringing to the college a blend of leadership experience in the academia and the industry. Please welcome president of Babson College, Mr. Lance Lessinger. Good morning. One of the wonderful things about participating in the Latin Forum uh, today is actually very, very simple and very, very personal. Um, this is the fourth Latin American Entrepreneurship Forum. This is my fourth year as president. Uh, and uh, I only wish I can say I have grown and developed uh, at the rate that the Latin American Forum has grown and developed. Uh, but they have more people working on it. Um, each year, the team that puts this together meets with me very early in the process to outline, uh, to outline their agendas and to outline their aspirations for this forum. Because the notion, obviously, that four years into it, we would be streaming to 20 locations in 12 countries is certainly beyond the comprehension of the group uh, that got us together in year one. And it's really interesting as we think about the metaphor of the students here that work on the Latin American Entrepreneurship Forum and the context of uh, the opportunities it presents uh, for entrepreneurs both in Latin America and in the world. They are an intensely polite but intensely competitive group. And each year they come in and essentially say to me, well, we'd like to do this, this, and this. But the most important thing is that at the end of the forum, we're all able to say, this group was better than last year's. <laughs> so we have big shoes to fill, an incredible agenda, a set of agendas to be able to reflect on and build on. Now, what are we trying to do at Babson, and how does it intersect with the work that we're talking about connecting up to here today in Latin America and the role of Latin America in entrepreneurship in the world? Um, those of you who are connected to Babson know this all quite well. Those that were being introduced to Babson for the first time, I'm just going to handle it quite briefly. First, my ad. Uh, Babson, uh, as you know, is an institution which is very much devoted to its roots in entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thought and action. Uh, and at the graduate level, with the vast majority of the folks involved in putting this uh, activity together, being at the graduate school, uh, we were just able to celebrate in U.S. News and World Report the 19th straight year uh, that we have been articulated and evaluated as the number one school in the world for entrepreneurship education. Uh, and 19 years begins to look like a trend. We're feeling some measure of optimism that there actually might be something substantive uh, underlying an institution being identified as number one for, for 19 years. And why are we evaluated that way and what are we trying to do? It's really very simple. One is increasingly we have uncovered no matter what it is you're doing, no matter what business you're in, no matter what functions you're connected to, no matter what activities you're engaged in, there is an opportunity to be able to operate under the umbrella of entrepreneurial thought and action, the, uh, the method that infuses this institution and actually characterizes the thoughts and actions of successful serial entrepreneurs around the world. The other day I was having the opportunity to engage a group of our applicants, undergraduate applicants, uh, who are thinking about coming to the institution. Uh, and I asked them as part of my presentation uh, to take out a piece of paper uh, and recognize that they were all going to graduate in the year 2016. And what I wanted them to do was write down exactly the assumptions about the world in 2016 that they were willing to bank and they absolutely wanted to be sure that we taught them to be able to master. And with 300 young people in the room, none of them were willing to articulate a single assumption about the world in 2016 they were willing to bank on. Not one. And that actually is empirical evidence for much of what we see in Latin America and much of what we see in the global environment in which Latin America exists. There aren't a lot of assumptions about the future that are very clear. Three weeks ago, we were talking about a rebounding of the American and global economy. That was just three weeks ago. Today, page one of the New York Times, it appears to look like dirt again. Two months ago, we thought we had some measure of control 
over the European debt crisis. Today, it doesn't look very clear. And we have two presidential candidates here who are all committed to understanding and infusing local economies with a deep understanding of what it takes from entrepreneurs and business people to create jobs. Yet the underlying assumptions they bring to the questions are fundamentally different. So how do we resolve those inconsistencies and how do we address that uncertainty? Well, the first thing we need to come to grips with, where are we today? Where are we in Latin America and what opportunities does it present both for Latin America and the world? Most of the Latin American economies that we look at, except for Venezuela, are in the middle stages of economic development. And there's no question, given the interest in conferences like this, that there's a lot of potential. There are growing markets and there are people with increasing amounts of disposable income. And as the middle class begins to grow in your markets, the countries have many more robust opportunities and the opportunities for entrepreneurship of all kinds are going to be greater than ever. For example, last year we spent a fair amount of time talking about Chile and Startup Chile. Chile had a huge jump in entrepreneurship last year. Why? It happens to be an environment where the government is aggressively promoting entrepreneurship, recognizing explicitly its key to economic development. You have a government there that's actually working on making the environment easier to start businesses. It is a registration system where you can go online and just register your business and actually get some training as well. Huge amounts of increases in training, huge amounts of attention to ease of doing business. Because of things like that, Latin American countries are among the highest among middle stage economies in the world where the population believes there are entrepreneurial opportunities. Years ago when I began my travels uh, into Latin America, I heard lots of conversation about all sorts of things that interfered with the ability to actually engage in entrepreneurial activity, ranging from the mindset and language system used to describe entrepreneurs to all the way the orientations towards risk. There is no question that is changing. Our own research through the Global Entrepreneurship Monitor indicates that the citizens of Latin American countries are extraordinarily high in believing that they have the capabilities and capacities to start a business. And by the way, regardless of what you tell me in idle chatter, we have systematic data that indicates that the fear of failure in Latin American countries is decreasing rapidly and significantly. Now these positive attitudes are fundamental to entrepreneurship because they don't only empower entrepreneurs, but they also interact with all of the other stakeholders they're connected to. So if we have positive attitudes among entrepreneurs and about entrepreneurship, as we now see in countries like Argentina and Brazil, and governments in Chile that are promoting it and trying to make it easier to start businesses, Entrepreneurs for Latin America in the world, this is your time. So what does it mean? What do we want to do here? What does it mean for all of you? The signs are positive. More people are starting businesses. Now the next stage is to use vehicles like this and the entrepreneurial population to really think about upping the innovation quotient and upping the capacity to compete on a global scale. You need to understand, I get to do these forums for all over the world. So I run over, I might be here today, but a few weeks ago I might be doing one on China. And when I talk about China, I talk about China's entrepreneurs looking to Africa for investments, doing massive energy projects. It is not going to be long before China will be looking significantly at Latin America, especially when there is a more politically stable environment that starts to attract in a systematic way foreign investment. There's no question Brazil, historically an isolated economy. You know, I used to say uh, to my families years ago, which was uh, if I was 20 years younger, um, I'd learn Mandarin and, uh, and move to China. And uh, I think there's enough evolution of the Chinese economy that I would simply say now, if I was 30 years longer, uh, or 30 years younger, I just learned Portuguese and moved to Brazil. And just extraordinary opportunities in so many different ways. But they're also going to have more competition on a global scale. 
According to Linda Rottenberg from Endeavor, who's done a lot of work in Latin America, the word entrepreneur used to be a very negative term in Latin America. They were viewed as big businessmen who want to take all of your money. Well, that has changed. We're moving from big businessmen who want to take all of your money to a generation of male and female entrepreneurs who want to create and distribute value in social and economic terms for themselves and for the world. And that's what here Babson is trying to celebrate all over the world. And that's the theme and the notion that underlies everything we're trying to do here in the Latin American Forum. So thank you all for participating. Let's get on with the event. Thanks so much.